let's just continue a little bit. Tape casting, which is related to casting, but uh, cast uh, the slurry onto a so-called carrier film, carrier tape, to to get it. And to control the thickness, you just control the the gap between your so-called blade, just the the thing that you use for moving. Scraping versus your carrier tape. Okay, here we are showing a schematic. You see, we have this tape that is rotating, and then we have slip contained in this container. At, at the bottom of this container, the slip would flow out. And how much will it flow out depending on my so called doctor blade position or the gap between the tip of the doctor blade and your carrier film. Make sense? If I leave it all the way up, all the slurry come out quickly. Of course, depending on the viscosity, it may not maintain that thickness. But as you can imagine, when I go to thinner and thinner, thinner, I'm going to, in principle, get thinner and thinner slurry until to the extent that the surface tension prevented to go away. Make sense? When the, when the slip, the gap is too small, no thing, nothing can flow out because the surface tension is enough to Hold it. Make sense? So that's kind of like, but in within extent, you can control it, the thickness. Not super precision control. But roughly, you can control whether, whether it's 10 micron versus, like, let's say, 20, 30 micron. And of course, you can do this multiple times. Cast and cast another layer. Or you can cast a thin layer and laminate thinner layer together to get a thicker layer. Do you see what I mean? I can cast a thinner layer and cast another thinner layer and then machine in laminate, put two layers together, pass them through a roller, and then I get a thicker layer. Okay? So use for the production of film or tape with thickness from 10 micron all the way roughly to one millimeter. Roughly to one millimeter. Okay, the slurry formulation consideration. Solvents, you want to use solvent. Traditionally, people use organic solvent, acetone, MEK for thin tapes, toluene for thicker paste. But these are organic solvent, more expensive and smelly, and also you have fire hazard. Make sense? Fire hazard. All these are combustible, flammable, or even explosive organic com compounds, which you try to do them. If you have to do them, do them with care. It's getting more and more common to use aqueous-based solvent, aqueous-based system. Cheaper, less smell, okay, more friendly. Ceramic content, typically 30 to 80 weight percent in the slip in your slurry, okay, depending on your process condition. You see, that's a big window. That's a big window. What is exactly you use? Well, depending on, I guess, most likely you are not the first one to do it. Depending on your history, depending on your tradition, depending on your quality, and you do some minor adjustment, okay? Binder, the polymer binder you added that gives it the plastic property. You can bend it back and forth because ceramic green body without binder, it's not going to give you that flexibility. Okay. Plasticizer, the small molecule that you added into the polymer binder to reduce the glass transition temperature, essentially to make the polymer more plastic, more flexible, like water or acetylene glycol, something like that. Dispersion, uh, to help the powders disperse really well. Dispersion, okay? So these are the numbers, and we don't have pre precise number, precise prescription. What you are gonna do, you try it in the lab. Also see what literature, what other people have been using, okay? So here I'm showing a recipe, kind of like a recipe region, uh, a triangle between Organics between powder between 
water. That's kind of like uh, your basic when you do slip casting or tape casting, your basic system. You have always, essentially, you need ceramic powder. You need solvent, and let's say we are using water. Let's say we are using water. And then all the binder plus all the, the binder and uh, the dispersant, we lump them into organics or even some non water plasticizer, isolate glycol, we lump them into organics. And what we see is okay, the literature okay, put out a different recipe. And you see, okay, it's quite often in this range. Quite often in this range. How do I read this plot? You see, organics. This scale is organics, which means I'm if I'm here, I have what? Zero organics. If I'm following down here, if I'm reaching here, I have a hundred percent organics. If I'm at this point, my system have zero powder, zero water, all organics. If I'm at this point, I have what? If I'm this point, I have read. I have a hundred percent powder, which means have to be zero organics, zero water, right? A hundred percent powder has to be zero organics, zero water. If I'm here, remember this is water scale. If I'm here, I'm a hundred percent water, zero powder, zero organics. Make sense? So just to keep in mind, uh, the, 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 the three so-called corner, that's very, very important. Here, I'm all organics. Here, I'm all powder, ceramic powder. Here, I'm all water. Okay, so let's pick a, some something like this. Like something like this point. Okay. So to determine this, to re kind of read this plot, like a three uh, component phase diagram. Do you see, if I'm here, I'm roughly 70% of powder by weight. 70 weight percent of powder by weight, if I'm pointing this point. Make sense? Because this is a hundred percent of powder. I'm here, 80 percent, 60 percent in between, I'm 70 percent. You read the powder on here. Make sense? But on the other hand, you may ask, Dr. Chen, can I read this for powder? Can I read this scale for powder? No, because this scale is for the left side scale, if I'm doing this, okay, I cut here 70, cut there 30. But if I'm thinking of powder, I have to read the powder scale. I'm 70% 70% what? Powder. But can I read this as 30% organics? No, you cannot. You have to you have to cut it in a different way. Here when I do powder, you see my cut is parallel to the this base, or I'm getting away from 100%, remember this point is 100% powder, which means this is 30% powder, okay? And uh, let's see, to get organics, to get organics, I have to read this way, and I have to do the cut parallel to opposite to from from this one, 100% organic, parallel to this guy, which means I have what? Five, roughly 5% 5 organic, instead of you read from here. You see what I mean? When you cut this way, it's 70% powder, but it's not 30% organic. You have to cut the other way to read what? Organics. Pay attention. You cannot just go down, okay, 70% powder 30% organic. No, you have to cut the other way. Cut 
like this right away to read organic. Now it gives you 5% organics because here it is zero organics. You see what I mean? Zero organics and then you go to here, I become a hundred organics. Of course, if I cut it from here, this is only 5% organic. Make sense? And then, of course, to get the water. To get the water, can I read from here? 95% water. No, because I'm already, what? 75% 70 powder. I cannot have 95% of water. Make sense? So to get the water content, you have to cut still another way, parallel to that axis, getting away from 100% water. Now you read 0% water, 20% water, 25% water. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? So kind of like, be very, very careful. Okay. Here, 70% of powder. No, it doesn't mean the rest of 30% is all organic. You cannot read. To organic, you have to cut in a different way. To get water, you have to still cut another different way. Make sense? Now you get water is 25% water. Make sense? So this is kind of the thing. Okay, okay, this is my recipe. What is your recipe? I have roughly... I have in this case 78% of powder by weight, 5% of organics, the rest 25 is water. Make sense? That's kind of one recipe, one representative recipe. Okay. So if I'm here, if I'm here, right? If I'm here from organics point of view. How much of organics? I mean, if you're right there, it's going to be uh, 60 organic and 40% water and still water. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If, I'm, if I'm here, in terms of powder, in terms of powder, I have, you remember, this is 100% powder. This side is zero powder. If I'm here, I have how much powder? zero powder make sense i have zero powder because this side is my 100 percent powder if i'm here i have zero powder and then i have 40 and uh, 60 right so if i'm reading water i'm 40 percent of water remember where is water the water is here it's 100 percent water so i'm 40 percent of water and the rest, the 60, would be okay. organics. But in this case, because I'm so far away from, remember here is your pure powder. I'm as far as I can be away in this scale from powder. So I'm zero powder. Here it's just I'm having a water polymer mixture with, if you read, 40% of water, make sense? 40% of water, and then 60% of okay. organics. Okay? So, you can, in the same way, you can read the other plot, which is between all the organics, quite often you have this person, you have binder, you have plasticizer, plasticizer. This person, let's look at this person. If I'm reading this person from 0 to 100, so here means it's all what? This person. But look at the actual formulation. The actual formulation, in terms of this person, most cases, the points are pretty far away from pure this person, which means the majority of the case, you have very little, close to zero, this person. And it's more between bundle and uh, plasticizer. That makes sense. You do quite often you do not want to add too much dispersion. Okay. And for binder, as we mentioned, PVA, if you are using aqueous system, PA, PAA, polyacrylic acid, also water soluble, PVAC, these are water soluble. Cellulose ether depending on what type of cellulose, some solvent based, some water based. Acrylic polymer, some of them, most of them are 
polymer based and copolymer. Plasticide, PEG, glycerol, these are quite often based on water based system, PPG. And dispersant, uh, such as uh, acrylic sulfuric acid, some inorganic ones. Of course, all of these go into detail. We, are not, we don't have the time to talk about them, but that gives you an idea. Roughly, quite often, you want reasonably high solid content. You do not want to add too much organics. Why? Because the organics all needs to be burned away. Too high organics gives you too high porosity. Okay, the solvent you can have to give you the flow capability. Between these three, you do not quite often want too much dispersant. Panda and plasticizer, you adjust them. You have a wide range between them. Okay? So, let's 